Welcome back to Essentials Explained. My name is Luke, and today we'll be talking about utilizing named ranges instead of specific range addresses in your formulas. We'll use these in conjunction with the sum ifs and count ifs we discussed in the previous video. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe, and let's jump right into the content. So if you watched our first video, we talked about how to write some ifs and how to write them efficiently and how to update your formulas. But let's talk about a slightly different way to do this that has its advantages and its disadvantages. So before we do that, I want to talk about named ranges. What are named ranges? If you go into formulas name manager, you can see all the different named ranges in your sheet. The only thing I have right now is a print area. but if I came in and let's say I wanted to define store number as a named range, I could go and I could say formulas, define name, and it would say store number is equal to this column. And so if I wanted to go back and maybe I wanted to say equals count of store number, I can actually refer, and that's not gonna work, but if I said maybe count A of store number, so count all cells with a value, 1217 because what it's doing is a count a of the named range store number which refers to a specific range address a2 through a1218 and then performs the formula so it's the same exact thing as writing this address but it's just an easier way or a different way to refer to that range address instead of going through and defining all of these names, I'm gonna use a shortcut. So if you highlight your full table and use control shift F3, you're gonna be able to create names. And so it's gonna have all these different sections. And what you really just wanna do is create names off your top row. It'll ask you if you wanna replace the existing definition of store number. Yeah, sure, that's fine, it's the same. So if I go to formulas now and I go to my name manager, I can see I have all these different names in my workbook. I have my product, which tells me it is from cell B3 to B1218, and all these different columns that I can refer to. So if I go back here, and let's say I actually wanna update this so I could write it a little bit differently, and I'll write equals some ifs on revenue. My first criteria range is my pink color, and then my criteria, will be red paint. I'll lock that in column B and leave the row relative. My next criteria range is my year, and I want that to refer to cell C18, lock it in its row, keep the column relative. I can carry that over, I can drag that right, and I can drag that down. And again, LTM column doesn't work because I have year here. What I could do is I could just update this to LTM and now this works. So we can pretty quickly see, is this the same exact thing? Yes, it is. These numbers tie, which is great. Um, and if you wanted to update this quickly, let's say you wanted to come in here, you wanted to paste it in here, and instead of using our find and replace on the range address, you can find and replace revenue with quantity. And you can see pretty easily that these numbers tie across all of our different tables. So looks like everything is exactly the same. The only change is how we've referred to our specific range addresses. So now that we know how to use named ranges and what they are, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of how to use these. Let's start with the cons. Cons are going to be, it's gonna be a little bit harder for people to understand what's happening in your formulas. So if we look at this top range, it's pretty easy for someone to come in and say, oh, okay, they're doing a sum if, so on the working data tab, and it's on these different ranges and you can back your way through it. This is gonna be a little bit trickier because they'll need to probably come up to your formulas and maybe they go up to the name manager and they can see where these different named ranges are or they could use the evaluate formula tool, alt MV. And so then they can see, oh, well now this refers to this range on the working data sheet and they can see it and walk through it, but probably not quite as easy to read. I, I think name ranges are, are not that difficult, but if you give it to someone that's maybe a little bit newer in Excel, they'll probably struggle. One thing you can do is control left bracket or open bracket will still take you to the first range in your formula. So 
that is also another thing people can do to, to make sure they understand where your data is being pulled from. So those are a couple of the cons. I think one big bonus here is you can easily update your range addresses throughout your sheet. Let me show you what would happen if we wanted to add maybe a few more columns here. So I'll just select these and I'm just gonna paste them at the bottom of our sheet. So let's go back. And has anything changed in our file? Doesn't look like it because this is still referring to the same range and this is still referring to the same range. If I wanted to go through and update these, I guess what I could do is I could change all of the different columns, which honestly isn't that hard. And you could highlight this and you could say, well, instead of going from 1218, I want to go to 1239. I could go back. I could just do a, a quick little find and replace and do 1218 to 1239, find and replace. And we've updated our addresses. Pretty simple. And this seems to be working across. Let's say we want to update named addresses. All I really need to do is go back into this sheet and select all of my table again. Control Shift F3, create names from selection. I don't want left column, I just want top row. Hit OK. okay. And what Excel will do is it'll ask you if you want to replace the existing definition of all your existing name ranges. We are fine with this, so we'll just hit yes through all this different selection, go back to our file, and then we can go use evaluate formula to see if our named range address has been updated. We can see that new named range has been updated to refer to 1239, 1239, 1239. So I've pulled in those last few rows. One little bonus tip for you guys, if you're working with a big sheet that has a ton of columns, right? Like when I did this, Control Shift F3, I removed the left column. It was pretty easy for me to change those addresses but let's say I'm just going to maybe add one more row and let's say you have a sheet that has a hundred columns and you don't want to deal with that. What you could do is you could go into formulas, name manager, and you could delete all of these different named ranges. And so if you just select these, hit delete, it'll ask you if you're sure, hit yes. And then go back in and create name from selection. That way you won't have to go through and say, yes, 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 yes. I want these new named ranges. Quick little bonus tip in case you are using named ranges or creating them from selection very frequently. I am going to now just hit control Z a lot so that I don't absolutely destroy my data file. If you're interested in learning more about how to utilize named ranges and specifically how to utilize the indirect formula to reference named ranges efficiently, please check out the next video in our series linked here. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Please leave your feedback below. Thank you.